Good day, everybody. Welcome back to our subject, Readings in Philippine History. We're still in our Chapter 4, which is all about the social, political, economic, and cultural issues in Philippine history. So what we will discuss with this video presentation, we will be discussing the 1935, the Commonwealth Constitution, the primary source, preamble of 1935 Commonwealth, the 1973 Constitutional author Authoritarianism. So our last discussion now is all about the, uh, we already uh, discussed two constitution, which were the 1897 Constitution of Biak Nabato and the Malolos Constitution of 1899. So now we'll be uh, targeting to finish this another two constitution, which are the 1935 and the 1973 Constitution. And now let's start with the 1935, the Commonwealth Constitution. It is worth mentioning that after the Treaty of Paris, the Philippines was subject to the power of the United States of America, effectively the new colonizer of the country. Yes, that's correct because following the uh, Treaty of Paris in 1898, which marked the end of the Spanish-American War and the Philippines, uh, Filipinas now, came under the control of the United States. So the transition from Gikan sa Spanish to American rule nagmarked na siya as a significant change in political landscape sa Pilipinas. And from 1898 to 1901, the Philippines would be placed under a military government until a civil government would be put into place. So this military government was led by General Wesley Merritt. No? Si Wesley Merritt ang, ang nag-guide aning uh, military government. Um, here's the spelling of Wesley Merritt, double R, I, and double T. So again, the military government was led by uh, General Wesley Merritt initially and then by subsequent military commanders. So during this time, no, the, the primary focus of the military government was to establish the control over the Philippines and para i-manage ang transition from Spanish rule to American administration. Mauna siya ang primary focus of the military government. And during this period, uh, nakita din hiya ang significant political and social changes as well as ang katong uh, resistance from Filipino revolutionary forces seeking for independence. And there are two acts of the United States Congress were passed that may be considered to have qualities of constitutionality. First is the Philippine Organic Act of 1902, and the second is the Philippine Autonomy Act of 1916. So let's start first with the Philippine Organic Act of 1902. It is the first organic law. Take note had this is the first organic law for the Philippine Islands that provided for the creation of popularly elected Philippine Assembly. So, um, coming Philippine Organic Act of 1902, it was also known as Copper Act. No, It is also known as Copper Act. Wana siya ang um, Philippine Organic Act of 1902. Again, the Philippine Organic Act of 1902 is also known as the Cooper Act after its sponsor na si Senator Henry A. Cooper. So maunang, uh, maunang gitawag po siya o Cooper Act kaya siya man ang nag-sponsor ani. No? Kani si Senator, uh, si, si Senator Henry A. Cooper uh, he was a prominent American politician who served as a U.S. senator. And this 
uh, Copper Act or the Philippine Organic Act of 1902 was indeed the first organic law enacted by the United States Congress for the Governance of the Philippine Island. Next is that the <clears throat> this act specified that legislative power would have uh, would be vested in a bicameral legislator composed of the Philippine Commission as the upper house and the Philippine Assembly as the lower house. Take note that the Philippine Commission served as the upper house and the Philippine Assembly as the lower house. So the legislative power, so a kind of legislative power was then vested into two chambers, which were the Philippine Commission and the Philippine Assembly. So what is all about this Philippine Commission? So of course, this served <coughs> as the upper house of the legislator. Um, member Ani were appointed by the President of the United States. Okay, again, um, President, uh, again, a member Ani, the appoint by the President of the United States. So the commission was initially tasked with both legislative and uh, executive functions, but over time, its legislative role diminished or nagagamay as the Philippine Assembly gained more power. While the Philippine Assembly... <clears throat> This serves as a lower house. No, this serves as a lower house of the legislator and was the first popularly elected legislative body in the Philippines. Members of the Philippine Assembly were elected by a qualified voters of the Philippine Islands. So, together with the uh, Philippine Commission and the Philippine Assembly formed the bicameral legislator that governed the uh, Philippines under the provision of the Organic Act of 1902. And this legislative structure um, represented an important step toward self-government sa Pilipinas. And one of the significant provision of this Philippine Organic Act of 1902 was the establishment of bicameral legislator in the Philippines and the Organic Act of 1902, it laid the foundation for a more formalized system of governance in the Philippines. And the key provisions of the Act included a Bill of Rights for Filipinos, mo na inyong memorize karon. And the appointment of two non voting Filipino resident commissioners of the Philippines as a representative to the United States House of Representatives. So if we talk about the Bill of Rights, no, since Mama ni inyo hangi memorize karon, so this act included provisions guaranteeing certain rights of the Filipino people or to the Filipino people, such as freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. Diba? Siya. And this appointment of Filipino resident commissioner of the Philippines, so this resident commissioner served as a uh, representatives of the Philippine Islands in Congress but did not have the right to vote on legislation. So nevertheless, Ang um, ilahang presence na provide og channel sa mga Filipino voices nga para mahear to be heard in the American legislative process and um, help to establish formal link between the Philippines and sa United States. The Philippine Autonomy Act of 1916, the second act that functioned as constitution, this act is commonly referred to us, Jones Law, which modified the structure of the Philippine government through the removal of the Philippine Commission, replacing it with Senate that served as the upper house and it uh, and its member elected by Filipino voters, the first truly elected national legislator. 
So again, <clears throat> the Philippine Autonomy Act of 1916 was commonly known as the Jones Law was indeed a significant milestone in the history of the Philippines under American rule because it represented a further step towards uh, self-governance and autonomy for the Filipino people. And one of the key provisions of the Jones Law or the Philippine Autonomy Act of 1916 was the modification of the legislative system in the Philippines because the Philippine Commission, again, had the Philippine Commission <clears throat> was abolished in its place. So um, Jones Law established a new legislative body called the Philippine Senate. No, ano siya. The Philippine Senate, which served as the upper house of the legislature. So what made the Philippine Senate particularly significant was that its members were to be elected by Filipino voters. Okay, ang mga members aning Philippine Senate elected by registered Filipino voters. Marking it marks the first time that Filipinos had the opportunity to directly elect representatives to a national legislative body. And this was a significant step forward in terms sa uh, democratic representation and self-governance of the Filipino people. And it was also in this act, no, and Jones Law, law that explicitly declared the purpose of the United States to end their sovereignty over the Philippines and recognize Philippine independence as soon as a stable government can be established. So the Jones Law, or the Philippine Autonomy Act of 1916, indeed included the provisions that laid out the United States' intention to grant independence to the Philippines once a stable government had been established. So this represented a significant shift in American policy towards the Philippines and reflected a growing uh, recognition of Filipino aspiration for self-governance and independence. So overall, uh, the provision of Sajon's law, it marked an important step in the journey towards Philippine independence. Again, these are the two acts of the United States Congress were passed that may be considered to have qualities of constitutionality. The Philippine Organic Act of 1902 and the Philippine Autonomy Act of 1916. <clears throat> so in 1932, with the efforts of the Filipino Independence Mission, mission led by Sergio Osmania and Manuel Rojas, the United States Congress passed the Hare House Cutting Act with the promise of granting Filipinos independence. So, kaning hair house cutting, mga, mga apelido ni sila <clears throat> sa proponent aning uh, act with the promise of granting Filipinos independence. So, this was indeed passed by the United States Congress in 1932. <clears throat> Nga nag-promise sila <clears throat> granting independence to the Philippines. Although its passage was not without controversy and ultimately led to further negotiations between the United States and the Filipino leaders. <laughs> and the bill was opposed by then Senate President Manuel L. Quezon and consequently rejected by the Philippine Senate. So there were <clears throat> disagreement no, na itabo between the Filipino leaders in the United States government regarding certain provision of this act. Particularly uh, <clears throat> concerning sa trade relations and military basis. And the terms of the act were not uh, favorable to the Philippines' interest and sovereignty. So the act was not ratified by the Philippine legislator due to this, <clears throat> this agreement. <clears throat> and in and by 1934, another law, the Tidings McDuffie Act, also known as the Philippine Independence Act, was passed by the United States Congress that provided 
authority and defend mechanisms for the establishment of a formal constitution by a constitutional convention. <clears throat> Again, among its key provisions, uh, Tidings McDuffie Act, <clears throat> uh, it authorized the Philippine Islands to draft and adopt their own constitution through a constitutional convention. So this was a significant step uh, towards uh, self-governance and allow the Filipino people to uh, determine their own political fu uh, future. So the Tidings McDuffie Act, <clears throat> In its journey toward Philippine independence, it provides a legal framework for the establishment of the Commonwealth government and, the, and paved the way for the eventual attainment of full independence in 1946. <clears throat> and the members of the convention were elected and held their first meeting on July 30, 1934, with Claro Imrecto elected as a president. <clears throat> So the constitution crafted by the Philippine uh, Constitutional Convention of 1934 to 1935, it was indeed designed with the approval of the uh, United States, no? approval of United States government <clears throat> in mind, as well as to ensure that uh, the United States would fulfill its promise to grant independence to the Philippines. So now we'll be proceeding to the primary source, preamble of the 1935 Commonwealth. So overall, I want you to read na lang this uh, preamble of the 1935 Commonwealth. So overall, this preamble of 1935 Constitution of the Philippines, it reflects the, the hopes, the, the aspirations, and guiding principles of the Filipino people on the journey towards self-governance and independence, and it, served, it serves as a fundamental statement of purpose for a constitutional framework that would shape the nation's history and development. So here, the Constitution created a Commonwealth of the Philippines and administrative body that governed the Philippines from 1935 to 1946. It is a transitional administration to prepare the country toward its full achievement of independence. And the 1935 Constitution of the Filipino of the Philippines uh, established the Commonwealth of the Philippines, which served as, as a uh, transitional government or administration from 1935 to 1946. So the primary purpose of the Commonwealth government <laughs> is para ma-prepare ang, uh, ang Philippines for its eventual attainment sa full independence. And the uh, Commonwealth of the Philippines uh, nagbibigay daan for the country's independence which was uh, achieved on July 4, 1946, when the United States officially recognized the Philippines as a sovereign nation. Now we are free now. <laughs> it originally provided for a unicameral nation assembly with a president and vice president elected to six-year term without re-election. So it is a... Uh, what does it mean, a unicameral National Assembly. So, muna siya ang legislative branch sa Commonwealth Constitution or Commonwealth Government uh, composed of a single chamber called the National Assembly. Muna siya ha? Unicameral, uni, isa lang. So, a single chamber called National Assembly. So, this meant, uh, this meant that there was only one House of Congress responsible sa pagbuhat o mga laws. <clears throat> so, Next, this uh this is structure also no outlined the 1935 Constitution of the Philippines, na establish siya of a uh, system of uh, government with a separation of powers between the executive and katong legislative branches with uh, mechanism in place to para if para ma avoid or ma prevent ang mga abuses of power and para ma promote stability in governance. <laughs> 
Next, it was amended in 1940 to have a bicameral Congress. Diba? Unicameral ito siya. So, amend siya in 1940 to have a bicameral Congress composed of Senate and the House of Representatives. As well as the creation of an independent electoral commission and limited the terms of office of the president and vice president to four years with one re-election. So the 1935 Constitution of the Philippines, uh, it underwent uh, it underwent significant amendments in 1940, which uh, brought about uh, several notable changes to the structure of government and elect electoral process. So, ang kanina mga <clears throat> amendments no reflected efforts para ma-strengthen ang democratic institution, promote accountability in governance, and para ma-insure po ang more balanced distribution of power within the Philippine government. <clears throat> so, rights to suffrage, mama na to ang right na to nga vote were originally afforded to male citizen para lang sa mga lalaki of the Philippines who are 24 years old or over are able to read and write. So, mana siya. And this was later on extended to women when within two years after the adaptation of the Constitution. So, pinakauna sa mga lalaki lang pero after two years na na-adapta po niya and nahatagan po of rights ang mga kababaihan to vote. So, while the dominant influence in the Constitution was American, it also bears traces of the Malolos Constitution, the German, Sp the German, Spanish, the Mexican Constitutions, Constitutions of several South American countries, and an written English Constitution. <laughs> so, here, the draft of the 1935, no, the, the draft of 1935 Constitution of the Philippines was indeed approved by the Constitutional Convention on February 8, 1935, and subsequently it was ratified by the United States President Franklin B. Roosevelt on March 25, 1935. So following the, the, the ratification of the Constitution, elections were held in September 1935 and <clears throat> to choose the first set of leaders of the Commonwealth government. And see si Manuel Cazon, a prominent Filipino statesman and a leader of a nationalista party, emerged as the president of the Commonwealth. He was elected as the first president of the Commonwealth of the Philippines. Okay, take note, ha? The first president of the Commonwealth of the Philippines was Manuel L. Cazon. And Manuel Alquezon's election as a president of the Commonwealth nagmarkan siya as the beginning of a new era of the history as the country embarked on the path toward a greater autonomy and eventual independence. <clears throat> and the Commonwealth of the Philippines no, was indeed interrupted by the, world, by the events of World War II, particularly sa... Uh, Japanese occupation of the Philippines from uh, 1942 to 1945. During this period, no, 1942 to 1945, the Philippines experienced significant hardship and challenges under the American, uh, American Japanese rule. Then, however, after war ended, the Philippines was liberated from Japanese occupation. We are liberated now. So efforts were made to restore the Commonwealth uh, Commonwealth government and re resume the path towards independence. And on July 4, 1946, the United States officially recognized the independence of the Philippines and the country was declared a fully independent republic. No? And this declaration, it marks the... Uh, culmination of years of struggle and sacrifice by the Filipino people for self-governance and sovereignty. And the Philippines became the first and the oldest democratic republic in Asia, establishing itself as an independent nation on the world stage. 
Now let's proceed to the 1973 constitutional authoritarianism. So Ferdinand Marcos was elected president of the Philippines in 1965, marking the beginning of his uh, presidency. So during his first term, the Philippine Congress uh, passed a resolution in 1967. Okay, during his first term, it uh, it calls for a constitutional convention to amend the 1935 constitution. So the call for this constitutional convention aimed to address sa mga lahi ng mga issues and concern within the existing constitutional framework and to adopt to the changing needs and aspirations of the Filipino people. So Marcos won the re-election in 1969, securing a second term as a president. However, ang iyahang victory na adaw ni mga allegation of campaign uh, nag overspending and the improper use of government funds para mataas ang iyahang vote sa re-election and these actions raise concern about elect uh, ele electoral uh, integrity and democratic process in the Philippines <clears throat> and election of the delegates of the constitutional convention were held on November 20 1970 and the convention began formally on June 1, 1971 with former president si Carlos P. Garcia being elected as a convention president. So unfortunately, namatay siya and he was succeeded by another former president kasi just gado makapagal. <clears throat> so before the convention finished, no, si Ferdinand Marcos declared uh, martial law in the Philippines on September 21. Take note ha, September 21, 1972. Nag-declared si Marcos of martial law sa Philippines. So he cited various reasons for declaration including sa mga the suppressed growing communist insurgency, maintain law and order, enact reforms to address perceived social and economic problems sa country, which is the Philippines. So as martial law was imposed, <laughs> the ongoing constitutional convention was abruptly halted or diglang tinigil. Some delegates were arrested. <laughs> Some delegates were ongoing constitutional convention were placed behind bars or <clears throat> were arrested or and detained. While ang others went into hiding or were forced into voluntary exile. So this interruption effectively put an end to the process of amending the 1935 Commonwealth through constitutional means. So instead, under martial law, Marcos implemented a new constitution, the 1973 Constitution, which conferred him with expanded powers and extended his terms as a president indefinitely. So this further centralized his authority and paved the way for his uh, prolonged rule over the Philippines. And it allowed Marcos to consolidate power, suppress dissent, and govern the country with authoritarian control. So with Marcos as dictator, the direction of the convention turned with accounts that the president himself dictated some provisions of the constitution manipulating the document to be able to hold on to power for as long as he could. And on November 20, 1972, the convention approved its proposed constitution. <clears throat> so the constitution was supposed to introduce the parliamentary style government where legislative power was vested in a unicameral national assembly with members being elected to a six-year term. So if we say parliamentary style government, it is a system of government where the executive branch derives its legitimacy from the legislative branch. And <clears throat> also... This system, no, kaning parliamentary style government, uh, this system of government is known for its 
national flexibility, responsiveness, and ability to adapt and changing political circumstances. And the president was to be elected as the symbolic and ceremonial head of state chosen by the members of the National Assembly. The president would serve a sixth term, no sixth term, and could be re-elected to an unlimited number of terms. And the executive powers has uh, executive power was relegated to the prime minister who was also the head of the government and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, who was also to be elected from the National Assembly. So in the proposed parliamentary-style government under the 1973 Constitution of the Philippines, an executive power now was indeed vested in, a, in, a, in the prime minister. So what is prime minister? A prime minister, they were responsible for running the government Sila ang nag-implement sa law and making policy decisions. And the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, Moni sila, they had ultimate uh, authority over the military forces of the country. And take note that the primary minister, as the head of the government, he was or she, it, uh, he or she was accountable to the National Assembly and could be removed from office through a vote of no confidence if they lost support of the majority in the assembly. And <clears throat> President Marcos issued uh, presidential decree number 73, no? like issued siya, PD number 73, setting the date on the plebiscite to ratify or reject the proposed constitution on November 30, 1973. However, uh, the plebiscite was postponed later on due to concerns that the public might vote to reject the constitution. And uh, ang katong postponement no, of the plebiscite allowed President Marcos and his administration to further consolidate power and ensure favorable outcomes. Uh, and katong uh, decision reflected authoritarian nature of the Marcos regime and its willingness to manipulate political process to maintain control. So the 1973 constitution was ratified through a plebiscite held on January 17, <clears throat> 1973 amid widespread allegation of fraud and irregularities. No, mana siya. So if we say plebiscite, ha? Mona siya, also known as a referendum. It is a, a direct vote by uh, by the electorate of a country or region and specific question or issue public of importance. So during this assemblies, no, kanin ko an, citizen assemblies. What do, we, what do we mean by citizen assemblies? We are, uh, mona siya ang mga gatherings organized by the government of the Philippines during the martial law era under the president under President Ferdinand Marcos. So instead of plebiscite, um, citizen assemblies were held from 10 to 15 of January 1973, where the citizen coming together and voting by hand decided on whether to ratify the constitution, suspend the convening of the interim of interim national assembly or continue martial law, or place a moratorium on election for a period of at least several years. So during these assemblies, a uh, citizen came together to discuss and vote on several important matters related to the proposed constitution and the political situation of the country. And if we say INA, or Interim National Assembly, it was a legislative body established in the Philippine Philippines during the martial law era under uh, President Ferdinand Marcos. So, ang interim national assembly, its primary function, uh, including uh, included katong enacting laws, overseeing sa mga government activities, and representing the interests of the Filipino people. The president on January 17, 1973, issued a proclamation announcing that the proposed constitution had been ratified. So the ratification was claimed to have uh, to have been based on the 
uh, overwhelming vote by members of the uh, citizen assemblies which were organized sa govern. And the constitution was amended several times. Again, the constitution was amended several times in 1970. And in 1976, ang, ang citizen assemblies uh, assemb once again decided na i-allow ang constitution of martial law as well as approve ang mga amendments. So ang interim uh, batasang pambansa to substitute the interim national assembly. Substitute ha? And the president to also become the prime minister and continue to exercise legislative powers until martial law was lifted and authorized the president to legislate his own on emergency basis. So in 1980, the retirement age of members of the judiciary was extended to 70 years. And in 1981, the parliamentary system was formally modified to a French-style semi-presidential system where executive powers power was restored to the president who was once again to be directly elected and executive committees no executive and executive committee was was to be created composed of the prime minister and 14 others that served as the president's cabinet and some electoral reforms were uh, instituted so if we say parliamentary system no again parliamentary system was formally modified to a french style so if we say parliamentary system it is a form of government where the executive branch derives its legitimacy from and is uh, accountable to the legislative branch typically called parla par parla parliament and executive committee, municipal uh, group of uh, individuals, no, typically elected or gay appoint. Task ang um, task ani kind uh, overseeing and executing the decision and policies of an organization, the bad the government body or ang mga corporation. And we all know naman that the prime minister is the head of the government in parliamentary system. And in eighteen in and in 1984, the executive committee was abolished and the position of the vice president was restored. And after all amendments were introduced, the 1973 constitution was merely a way for the president to keep executive powers, abolish the Senate, and by any means, never acted as a parliamentary system, instead functioned as authoritarian presidential system with all the real power concentrated in the hands of the president with the backing of the constitution. So the 1973 constitution of the Philippines was designed to uh, consolidate executive power under the president rather than establish a parliamentary uh, system no? <laughs> and a governance system in which a president held and extensive power. So the 1980s in the Philippines were indeed a significant turbulence in political upheaval, primarily revolving around the authoritarian rule of uh, President Marcos and growing opposition of his uh, region. So Ferdinand Marcos who had been in power since declaring martial law in 1972, right? And continued to consolidate his authority throughout the 1980s. So his regime was characterized by authoritarian governance, very authoritative, with significant control over the government, control over military, and control over media. And many Filipinos become or became increasingly disillusioned sa iyahang pamamalakad due to allegation of corruption, human rights abuses, and economic mismanagement. So in August uh, 1983, si Benigno Aquino Jr., no? muna siya ang prominent opposition leader and a vocal critic of Marcos. 
He was, we all know that, na-discuss na nato ni, he was assassinated upon his return to the Philippines from exile in the U.S. So, Aquino's assassination, na-shock na, 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 na ang nation and the spark ang widespread spread of outrage leading to turning point into Philippine history. Moto da yung nidagan da yung si Cory Aquino. And there was widespread suspicion that the orders to assassinate Aquino came from the top levels of the government. O, di ba? Came from the top levels. Ang katong pag-assassinate kang poan. Aquino, Benigno. And this event caused the coming together of the non-violent opposition against the Marcos authoritarian regime. And Marcos was then forced to hold a snap election a year early and said election were marred married by widespread fraud. So Marcos declared himself as a winner despite international condemnation and nationwide protest. So a small group of military rebels attempted to stage a coup but failed. However, this triggered what came to be known as the It's a People Power Revolution ni Korea Aquino of 1986 as people from all walks of life spilled onto the streets and under pressure from the United States America who used to support Marcos and his martial law, the Marcos family nilupad into exile. And his opponent in the snap election, si Benigno Aquino Jr., widow of Corazon Aquino, was installed as the president on February 25, 1986. Mga ito na napalitan da yun si uh, Ferdinand E. Marcos pagka-president ani nga time. Okay? So mga ito, nahimong president si Cory Aquino. And that's the end of our discussion. Thank you so much for your listening. I hope that you learned something in our discussion. Thank you and have a great day.